Welcome everyone to the Bucks County Living Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Neff, your real estate resource. Today I am joined by my good friend, Kevin Moyer, the owner of Moyer's Landscaping. Hey, Kev, how you doing today? Hey, good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad that you were able to come and join us on the podcast. I've been trying to get you all year now. <laughs> you were actually the one that I told about this podcast idea like when it first was uh, just an idea. And you were the one that was like, just go for it. Just do it. Like, what are you waiting for? Yeah, and pretty pretty sure I told you I'd be your first guest, and here we are. Yeah, here we are, like almost <laughs> almost 20 episodes. Jeez, 22, 23, something, 20 episodes in. It's incredible. And I'm so glad that, uh, that you're finally able to join me because I know you're, you're busy, man. Your, your landscaping business has taken off in the uh, the short five years that you have really been fully committed to uh, to growing the brand and growing your business. And I'm really excited to talk about you and your story because you're, you're from Bucks County originally. Yep. So, uh, what is uh, is your background? What's what's a brief background about you? So I grew up in uh, Richboro. I guess before that, don't remember, but we lived in uh, Southampton, like across from Clinger uh, Middle School, and then quickly moved over to Richboro. And my family has changed houses, but have lived in Richboro that whole time. So. Uh, um, really, you know, aside from like vacations growing up, spent summers and winters and everything in Bucks County. Um, so definitely have some local, local roots. What would you say your favorite memory as a kid in Bucks County is because it's such a family friendly place? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a good point. Like it's definitely very family friendly, very, uh, you know, everybody in the neighborhood knew who you were, but I guess like best memories growing up were just hanging out in the neighborhoods. Um, I lived over off of like Friesland drive, kind of between Tanyard road and Alms house road. And after school or in the summer, it was always manhunt or some type of games. We'd go up to Welch elementary school and, you know, play on their playgrounds or their fields and stuff like that. And, it was almost like I'd leave my house on my bike and make my way down to the school and you'd pass your friend's house and they would follow. And by the time we got to the school, there was 15 of us. And um, it was just a fun, safe environment to grow up in. You know, um, times are crazy now and we're definitely blessed living in Bucks County. Um, definitely a, a safe family friendly area in my opinion it's interesting because i think you know a lot of kids nowadays are you know stuck on playing video games and and sometimes it feels like the parents are kind of dragging the kids out of the house like hey go go outside go play outside yeah um and our generation was was a little bit different you know we had the taste of the video games where you know we're both 90s babies and we were uh we we grew up with that uh very much so in our lives but i feel like those those young uh formative years especially growing up in in a good neighborhood um is uh, is something that is really uh, a testament to bucks county itself because now i still see it right like even now when i'm riding around town and, and showing houses or or meeting with clients or anything i still see some kids playing outside it's not as much as it was when i was a kid but that might also just be like i'm not I'm not out there looking for kids. Like I'm out there, I'm out there looking to, to try and sell houses. Right. So it's uh, it's just, it's an interesting dynamic because I think that you know on the surface level that kids playing outside hasn't changed, but it's just kind of changed a little bit as far as like how what else do they have access to? They have access to the video games. They have access to to all that stuff and, and the different platforms. But there's nothing that beats like a game of kickball in the middle of the street or a game of, uh, well, maybe not kickball, game of basketball in the middle of the street right? and, uh, or like hockey down at the park or something. Yeah. Yeah. So what, um, I want to talk about Moyers landscaping a little bit, cause this is like your, your baby. This is something that has just grown exponentially over the last five years. Um, you started off, I, I remember you started off with mostly lawns, just cutting lawns and it was weekly or, or bi-weekly. Um, you've kind of gotten away from that now. What other kind of services do you offer with Moyers Landscaping? So, kind of to touch on everything you just said, uh, like we we started off, you know, I worked a bunch of different trade type jobs because I realized quickly that I didn't do well 
in the, you know, standard nine to five setting where, you know, I'd be at work at nine and then you're done at three. Because for me, like the 12 o'clock to three o'clock, I'm checking my phone every 20 minutes and not productive. And, you know, I, I did better in the, you know, we're done when the job's done environment and uh, tried a ton of different trades and ended up, you know, liking landscaping and seeing um, that it would be pretty simple for me to replace my current income landscaping on my own without having to answer to a boss and uh started off just cutting lawns in like lower bucks uh like levittown bristol croydon area um and was able to you know do like some mulch jobs and trimming jobs and stuff like that um on the side but like didn't really have the equipment I needed or the trucks I needed or the labor I needed, um, you know, but had a pretty extensive background and knowledge of what I was doing, but just didn't have the funds to, you know, get the material and stuff that I needed. And, you know, fast forward, um, you know, we still cut lawns. Um, but I remember when I like started my business, it was like, what do I want to name it? You know? And it was, um, a body mind's like stars and stripes landscaping, you know, and like different names that um, implied cutting grass because that was like the main service I was trying to push just because it was easy. And I figured it would be easy for me to get a client base on, like, let me cut your grass. Like, it's very simple. Um, but choosing Moyers landscaping and not Moyers lawn service being like intended that I don't want to cut grass. I don't want to be known as the grass guy. I want to be known as Moyers landscaping dot 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 you know what i mean so got got us to where we are now um mainly like a design installation company so like i said we still have the grass route it's free advertising with the big truck going around cutting grass and we have some loyal customers that you know we enjoy servicing on a weekly basis but um you know our business model kind of switched to design install um so i'll go out to your home um, typically like a typical call would be like, uh, you know, somebody calls first point of contact is my fiance, Jess, and she'll schedule an estimate with you typically on a Saturday because Monday to Friday I'm working with the guys. Um, Saturday I'll come out to a house and I'll have a note in my calendar that says, you know, mulch trimming, uh, remove tree and, you know, meet somebody at their home, walk around, see some ways that we can enhance or improve their property. Um, and a lot of times we'll provide a free design, um, of a different area of their property so they could see it. Um, and nine times out of 10, you know, I could be there for pulling weeds in their garden and we end up, you know, doing low voltage lighting and plants in the front instead, just because, you know, we're able to offer so much with this design software. Um, and then that got us in doing like a lot of pools, like customers are getting new construction pools or, um, you know, buying a new home and, and flipping it or, or completely new construction and have no idea what they want. Um, and we're able to provide, you know, CAD program drawings or, or blueprints and stuff like that. So they can see it and visualize it and feel it before, um, you know, before, cause landscaping is always the last step of a new home for, for most people. Uh, for me, you know, I move into my house and I rip the tree out right away and put, put plants in. But, um, you know, it's always, it's always relieving when a, when a customer is in the middle of a new build or a new pool or their new house. And, and, you know, the, they're, they just dealt with the floors have been on back order for six months and the cabinets are the wrong color. So the guy's going to come out in two weeks to paint. And I'm like, no, we'll be done in two days, you know, and we're done in two days. And, um, it's just like the finishing touch at the end of the, of a new, you know, new home or, or, you know, new to you home or, or, you know, you just want to kind of revamp your house. Um, we're definitely able to, you know, achieve that and give you a better idea of what it could look like rather than, you know, here's what we'll do. We'll put a bush here and, you know, Japanese maple tree here. And then I watch the customer looking at the birds cause they don't know what that is, but it's like, here's a picture of your house and this is what it's going to look like when it's done. Um, that's pretty much what we've, fell into that's beautiful because I, I think that's one of the reasons that you and I gotten along so well right from the beginning right because um, you're the business itself is secondary to the client experience 
mm-hmm. making sure that they have uh, the best experience because, uh, like you said, the floors on back order, the cabinets are the wrong color. <laughs> a lot of different things can go wrong with contractors buying or selling a house, right? And ev- anything can go sideways at any point. Mm-hmm. And uh, when uh, the main focus is providing that that top level quality of a customer experience the the dollars are secondary and the business just grows exponentially where uh, i mean now you, how many crews do you got out there working on a on a daily basis uh so we got big and we dialed back you know okay. because i was growing in every different area trying to just see what was going to work and like i just explained kind of fell into the niche of design install so dialed it back in we have one grass crew um and then two installation crews that nine times out of ten are just a six guy crew with two or three trucks at one job um so three crews technically and that's a lot that's a lot for a for a still fairly new business owner right five years is is not that long in in the grand scheme of things right i mean some of your competitors have been doing this for a lot longer but they don't provide that that quality assurance that i feel like you offer yeah right so uh, um I love it, and uh, and I think that because you were also out there hustling. I remember you were talking about putting like flyers on windshields and yeah. door knocking and mailers and, and and really like trying to get this to to go off the ground because you knew that that you could do it. Yeah, yeah. Before before it really got big, I uh, I had a buddy who owned like nine nine homes, and you know he agreed to allow me to cut the nine homes and it was like $200 a a week to cut them. Um, and I was like, I just need like 400 more dollars a week. And I remember it was like, I I don't know, January or so. Like it was the winter and I drove all throughout Bucks County looking at addresses with a notebook. I still have this notebook of like ideas and, and stuff I would write down. Um, and like, it was just crazy how it started, you know. I like I was working for a guy and I bought a trailer, and then like I, I quit with that guy and I started uh, delivering pizza in Bucks County and um, bought a leaf blower and just like slowly started acquiring tools. And every time I did a job, I bought more tools and stayed broke and just kept reinvesting and reinvesting. Um, but yeah, I drove around to every neighborhood uh, that I could and literally just wrote down their number, like street name number forty seven thirty six, and just solicited and sent you know, in the mail, um, all these letters, I think of like the 500 that I sent out, I got two customers, but it paid for the time, you know, I wasn't doing anything else at the time besides delivering pizza. And that one customer for their $30 grass cut a year, $780 or whatever it comes out to. Plus I did his mulch and you know what I mean? So even, even getting one customer out of 500 tries for the little bit of gas I used, um, it also put my brand out there at the time, but yeah, I love it. <laughs> I don't know. I love it, dude, because it's, you know, that, that hard work definitely pays off that hard work. And, and the people, I feel like your customers sense that too. Cause now you're, you're mostly referral based, right? Yeah. Where yeah, Everybody yeah. just kind of talks to one another and, um, Hey, Kevin Moyer, Moyer's landscaping did an incredible job. Clearly you can see from my carb appeal and it has increased the value of my home. <laughs> and, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot is our Google presence, our Google reviews. Um, blessed to have our clients, you know, happy with our work and sharing their experiences on Google with pictures and and a star rating and a description of their experience. And, and it is like a common denominator um, that I see that customers do say, like, this was one of the most, I literally, I forget what it said without pulling it up, but like one of the more recent reviews we had was like, this was the um, best experience we've ever had with a contractor. Just because, you know, not bashing other contractors, I have a ton of buddies in different fields and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I could be in the same position, but um, a lot of a lot of people just get a job and then go start it and then go do another one or do this and come back and forth and try to um, stick to a schedule. And like like you said, customer service is, is the business we're in, you know, like, yes, I provide a service, but you know, making sure that the customer is happy is all that matters at the end of the day. Um, Yeah. Awesome. What, um, I guess, what's like, you know, because there's a lot of landscapers out there and uh, I feel like not everyone can do what you can do. 
what would you say is that inspiration? What what's like? I guess what's holding you back from like selling uh, this this beautiful business that you've grown and just like going to work for another design and install company? Uh, because I love doing what I do. You know, I, I like. It's so satisfying pulling up to somebody's house in the morning um, and taking like a quick video of the front of their house or the side of their house or their pool that's all dirt. Um, and having, you know, like like a typical install job would, would go like this. We're, we're at the shop. The guys have a picture of the design and we get all the tools that we need ready to go. We get to the house. We walk around the property together and looking looking at this design. Um, mind you, I'll take, you know, some before pictures because it, it looks like crap usually um or going to a house that has plants everywhere and rip them all out of the ground with machinery it's it's an adrenaline rush it's fun it's uh it's interesting to me um and then literally going and buying material and and staging it and then having it look exactly like this design that we're working off of when it's done it's just so satisfying um and it's it's just like a incomparable feeling to when, when you're done walking around that job or knocking on that door or texting the customer like, hey, do you want to come out and, and walking through and giving out watering instructions or asking them what time they want their lighting to turn off. Is it midnight? Do, do you want them on all night? Um, it's just it's just cool seeing those, seeing that customer go from, you know, excited to satisfied i guess i think you should take reaction videos of people walking yeah. out their front door just like oh my goodness yeah. kevin you did yeah. such a great job <laughs> the best is jobs that like you know customers oh my god is it how many days is this gonna be like we'll be there we'll be done in two hours you know and they're like wow i'm at work like they're like okay no problem send a check in the mail and and you know i get home i'm eating dinner and i get a text from that customer who just came home and they're like floored you know what i mean and it's just very satisfying um and like i can remember in the beginning going on estimates and customers not trusting me at all rightfully so you know i pull up in a rinky dink truck with a magnet a little crooked and just uh i knew what i was doing but i didn't look like i knew what i was doing you know today we were you know blessed to have newer trucks and nicer stuff and jackets with names on them and stuff like that and um but those first jobs in the beginning, not trusted by customers, they, they would schedule to take the day off of work to make sure that they're home when we're doing something that to me was simple because in the beginning it was just trim the bush and plant the tree or tr whatever, you know, something really simple. They would take off, they'd come out in the morning, they'd go over the plan with me again and, you know, it was very monotonous and, and to me it was offensive, but I was very humble in the beginning because it was just like, I, I know what I'm doing, you know, I'm a professional. Um, it is the mentality, but you know, look at me, I was outside with the, the Dodge Dakota with the missing hubcap, you know, so yeah. rightfully so. And then they would come out around nine o'clock with waters. Really. They just wanted to look around and make sure I didn't rip the, the window out of the side of their house or something. And then usually they'd come out around lunchtime again, offering waters, but forgetting about the waters because they see what we're doing and they knew that we knew what we were doing. And, and that's when I would gain the customer's trust and, and that's a conversation you and I have had that I just thought of when you, you brought up the customer service part was that like today, my goal is to either have the customer's trust before I'm there or to get it before we open the fence to their backyard, where instead of them telling me everything they need, I'm explaining to them what they should do. And it's just different. It's a, it's a trusting relationship from the door. Um, and nine times out of 10, I know personally that the job sold before, you know, before we're halfway through going through the whole proposal or, you know, the idea of what we're going to try to achieve, you know, um, and it all goes back to trust and, and customer relation. And, you know, those customers, they're not coming out at nine in the morning anymore to, to offer water because, you know, they're peeking out the window, smiling, take, or coming out and they're taking pictures and showing their friends, you know what I mean? Or I get added on Instagram because the, the wife just, just put it on their story. Like, look at what they're doing in my house. It's incredible, you know? It's just, it's just different. And that's something that I take really serious to like gain that customer's trust. And that's, that's also, it's like a gift and a curse. Like it's holding me back in a sense, because I don't want to send, you know, Joe Blow to go do the estimate um, because it can mess up that, that trust, that customer, like 
like having that trust in the estimate process is what is the most important thing to closing a sale for me. Um, like I, I, like I said, I know leaving an estimate if I'm going to get the job or not, because the difference between me and, you know, a, B and C landscaper is say the job is, is simply just mulch and this and that, you know, it comes in, our estimate will come in on a nice letterhead nine times out of 10, you're getting a design that wasn't necessary, you know, for, for the heck of it, I'll take a picture of the side of their house and, and show them a little rendering of what they could do or, you know, what the other guy was going to do. And it just, it's just more polished. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So let me ask you as, as a designer, um, because you, you do designs a lot. I think most times when I call you on the weekends or something, it's always like I'm working on designs, I'm working on yeah. designs. Um, is there like fashion trends like there are with like botany trends and horticultural trends where like what, what's like the hot ticket item right now as far as landscaping? I mean, I know it's winter, but like what, yeah. what was the, the hot ticket item this year that a lot of people were getting or asking about? Mm, so, I mean, there always is like it really base is based off of the architecture. You know what I mean? So like depending on the home, like the new thing in real estate, I'm sure, you know, is like these modern farmhouses, mm-hmm. white you know, white vertical siding and the, and the black windows. And to me, it's like, okay, they're going for the farmhouse look, or you got the big pendant light hanging under your, like, as soon as I see that, I know, I know what to do. It's a traditional landscape. You want hedges, you want greens, you only like white, you probably like are okay with yellow and maybe purple, but you'll never want to do anything outlandish. You know, you're not going to want, uh, it's just, there's, it's, it's all based off of the architecture really. But yeah, that's the biggest thing for me when, you know, the the estimate basically turns into me interviewing the customer of like what do you like you know do you like color do you like evergreen and, and there's different styles there's like west coast type of feels and there's you know more traditional feelings and then there's farmhouse feelings but i, I mean the hot thing recently has been like farmhouse simple um like modern designs. Yeah, modern farmhouses, my wife would mm-hmm. like to say. Yeah, yeah. But then but then they don't realize to, to get that hedge, you know, to go twenty feet is gonna it's gonna cost you a substantial amount of money to get, you know, thirty boxwoods in a row like that. Um, yeah. And then things change a little bit. But that too, like with the design, it's easy to say, Hey, this is what you wanted and this is what you cost and if it's out of budget it's no problem. Let's take out A, B, C and D and then here's what it could look like and be in a more comfortable budget. Um, and you can either work towards it or give those boxwoods three years to grow into the hedge instead of having it immediately. Right. Um, there's not necessarily trends. It's usually just like it, I need deer resistant and uh, and hardy because I'm not a gardener is usually what it is. And people don't understand that in Bucks County, we have a great climate. And no matter what I plant at somebody's house, it's warranted for a year, first of all, um, as long as they follow our two week watering schedule. Um but after the first two weeks of watering any new plant, Mother Nature picks up the bill. You don't have to do anything. Um, aside from spring and fall cleanups are suggested, or at least one of the two, to trim and maintain some of the stuff, you're not going to be out there meticulously watering anything that you can plant at a local garden center in Bucks County. Um, it's pretty much just you know give it that water because it goes through shock when you're planting it into the ground, right. um, and then it establishes and, and is fine. Because we're not trying to plant, you know, a palm tree in Pennsylvania. You, yeah. You can't do it. But Yeah, you're trying to. You could, but you'd have to do some crazy stuff to get it to, <laughs> to live. Yeah. You'd probably have to bring it inside in the winter. I think seeing a palm tree in Pennsylvania would probably make me move to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. So next, I like to move into a section called the Big Three. So the big three are questions, three questions that I ask everybody that is on the podcast. So my first question for you, Kevin, is what do you think makes Bucks County a great place to live? So kind of back to my first memories in Bucks County, I guess, like it's a safe, safe environment, good schools, um, nice neighborhoods. There's a, there's a ton to do a lot of organized sports outside of the school system with, uh, you know, whether it's the Newtown Athletic Club or, or the uh, Civic Center over in Richboro, there's, you know, a ton of different organizations you could get into as a kid. And um, the land is beautiful. The Four Seasons is, is awesome. Um, we've recently moved to Hackborough, which is like just on the outskirts of Bucks County, Montgomery County. But it's, you know, it's 
still a beautiful area to, to raise a kid and to feel safe about letting them play outside and, you know, not have to worry about, you know, crazy stuff really going on. Um, yeah, you're like just on that yeah. Montgomery County side. It's on, like I literally think the, other, the other side of County Line might be Bucks. Yeah, so. the, yeah, it's weird how they named the yeah. <laughs> they named County Line Road. Like, yeah, right. Like it's a the County Line or something. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Um, no, it's just a good area, man. Like I feel, you know, like especially the position that I put myself in when I had, you know, got engaged and you know had a kid, and we have another one coming. You know, we could move if, if we needed to. Um, but there's not anywhere else in the tri-state that I'd rather – because I feel more comfortable raising a family. So. Awesome. I, I love it. I love to hear that. What would you say your favorite restaurant is in Bucks County? So so I've been pondering this for a while because there's a ton of different restaurants. Um, but I, I would say there's, there's this spot called 59 Oms House. Right on Oms House it's Road. On Oms House Road, um, my parents, my fiance is vegan, and her and I were at my parents and left and needed dinner and Googled that place. Came up as having some options, and they make really good burgers and uh, really nice outdoor seating there. It's a, it's a good spot. That's beautiful. I'll have to try it. Yeah. And my last question for you, Kevin, is where can people find out more about you and Moyers Landscaping? Uh, so Instagram, Facebook. Google Moyers Landscaping. Uh, Instagram is Moyers Landscaping. Um, we have a website, Moyers MoyersLandscapes dot com. Uh, that's about it. I mean, you Google Moyers Landscaping, we're coming up. Especially if you're in Bucks County, uh, the algorithm is pretty good with that. So awesome. Tell Jess that if you're listening to the podcast and you and you need some landscaping services, call the number on Google. You'll be talking to Jess. This is almost Mrs. Moyer and uh, tell it, tell them that you heard about the landscaping company from the podcast and uh, maybe they'll get a special treat. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hey, if, uh, <laughs> if you, if you call our business and say you heard us on the podcast, I'll, I'll give you a hundred dollars off any, any installation we do. Beautiful. You heard it here first folks. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kevin, for, for taking the time to sit down with me today and talk about your business and your history in Bucks County and, and how your, your business just continues to grow and flourish in Bucks County because you definitely do some beautiful properties. I follow you on Instagram. I see all the beautiful things that you guys are doing and I'm really excited to, to see you and your business and your family continue to grow and, uh, and really just be absolute pillars in the community. So thank you so much, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Awesome. And as always, I'm your host, Alex Neff. Make sure to reach out if you have any questions about Bucks County living.